It's Wednesday, which means that we're continuing our mid-grade fiction series. We started in the pre-writing phase with the overview video, a series business plan, category and keyword research, and then last week we came up with some series ideas. Today, we're delving into the first step in building the story stage, crafting a compelling premise. If you're new here, welcome to Bite Size Booksmith, where technology empowers creativity. I'm Angie, and on this channel, we explore how emerging technologies and AI can enhance our craft and lives as writers. But before we get started, I wanted to remind you about this Notion document that's available for anyone following along. On it, you'll find links to all of the videos so far, as well as prompts. Before we dig into today's prompts for creating our book premise, let's first take a look at what I've done since last week. So I had a bit of a hard time. I really stressed myself over the weekend trying to take the idea that I came up with last week using the magical summer camp with the human kids and creating our scary stories for children's book. It just wasn't working out for me and I wasn't in love with any of the ideas that came up. So I ended up using the prompt from Katie's Spy, the one that I shared with you. I think it was prompt number two. Yeah, it was prompt number two from last week. And so I did this yesterday. I put in, it brings in automatically all the book titles of the first 40 books in the, the bestseller rankings. And so it started a lot like last week. And then it gave me this monster detective agency. And I had already been thinking about maybe making the kids cryptids. So making them monsters, basically. And so when this came up, I was like, okay, this is perfect. This is what I was looking for. Because with the kids' summer camp and having them humanish, I was getting really strong Percy Jackson vibes. And I felt that I was going, I was straying too close. So I wanted to do something very different. And this came up for me yesterday. And I was super duper excited about it. So from here, what I did was is I put in here, I like I really like the idea number three, Monster Detective Agency. Please give me some more ideas for the series. And so it expanded upon it. it. It gave me the concept. It gave me the characters. And it gave me some possible book ideas. But if you look at the book ideas, they are meant to be done in like a serialized. So they're, I'm trying to think the word, they're meant to be done in a certain order. And that's something that I didn't want to have be something that I needed to worry about. I wanted books where a child could pick it up. It didn't matter if it was the first book or the 10th book, be able to pick it up and know exactly what's going on. So did I make myself have to work harder? Probably, but that's neither here nor there. It also came up with some really cool ideas like adding puzzles. And actually, that might have been another chat that I had. It recommended putting in some like word puzzles and stuff like that in there too. So I came down here. I love this idea and the characters you created. Please tell me more about how the characters came together to form Monster Detective Agency because that wasn't covered in any of the things that chat came back with. And so it started building up this background for us. So how did they meet their first encounter? Initially, they mistrusted each other how they discovered the agency and the you know the formation of their bonds and who's who on the team. I was really excited about having, I've got actually three girls and two boys. I wanted three boys and two girls, but it didn't quite work out that way. So we've got Frankie, which obviously Frankenstein. Vlad is a, a vampire. Uh, Gwen is ghost. Luna, I believe, is a werewolf. And then Mystic Mira uh, is a witch. I said, ideally, I'd like readers to be able to pick up any book and get up to speed, which is what I just explained to you. And it gave me some suggestions on how I could make things a little bit different to ensure that like the boxcar children, like Nancy Drew, like the Hardy Boys, you could pick up any of those books and get up to speed pretty quick. Okay, so. I asked it to go back and to take those book ideas from earlier that it shared with me and with the new direction, the fact that I don't want them to be 
consecutive for it to provide me some additional information. So in each of the books, it's making sure that there is self-contained mystery, meaning that there's the mystery is actually completed. It, it's like a Scooby-Doo episode, basically. You find the bad guy and then you all go back home. And it also has an introduction. So that gives you an opportunity to be introduced to all the characters, how they came together, why they're together before they go off and go do their Scooby-Doo thing. Okay. Some suggestions, adjustments. And then I said, from these book ideas, which one would be the best to start with? And it told me that the haunted carnival mystery would be the best starting point. And it gave me its reasons why. And I agreed. With I thought that the haunted carnival mystery would be the best starting point. So now we are going to go to my prompts. And hold on one second. We'll make this a little bigger. So I actually have two versions this week for the synopsis. I've got this original one is from Mira Gold. And it's, I made some changes to the one from last week. This was actually step two from last week from the Mira Gold template as well as another one as well. This one writes the synopsis and then this one strengthens it to make sure that there's nothing weak, vague, or any problem areas because we want to make sure that we have as much information as possible. And then we, as the author, can determine what we want to keep, what we want to get rid of, and then what we want to put in the book ultimately. And then we also have this version two. It's a little bit simpler. But I wanted to give you guys two options. So this is something if I'm if I'm using all of the miracle prompts, I'm going to use these up here. But if I'm doing something just on the fly, I would probably use this version down here. So I'm going to move these out of the way. And we are going to run both of these. So give me one second. OK, so I'm coming here and. Let me explain the prompt. So write a 500 to 600 word children's scary stories novella synopsis using the haunted carnival mystery concept in the children's science fiction and mystery genre and the children's scary stories subgenre, which those are the categories actually inside of Amazon. And then I also wanted to add five to seven tropes, eight to 10 themes. Provide a title for the story along with a name for the series. I also want to make it clear what the goals, motivation, strengths, and weaknesses of are the cast members and make sure we have an antagonist that wants something. And then it's, we'll also talk a little bit about setting and descriptor words and then the tone and the style and the mood as well as subtext. So I'm going to go ahead and let this go. Okay, so it went ahead and stuck with the Haunted Carnival Mystery and the series name it came up with, which is Monster Detective Agency Chronicles. So in the small town of Shadowville, five extraordinary youngsters form the Monster Detective Agency. Their first case, the Haunted Carnival Mystery, unfolds over a series of thrilling days and nights, weaving a tale of friendship, bravery, and mystery. We've got our cast, Frankie, Vlad, Gwen, Luna, and Mira. And it went ahead and gave them first and last names as I requested. And then we've got our antagonist here. We've got a former carnival illusionist who seats the legendary elixir of life hidden on the carnival grounds. And we've got our tropes. So we've got a haunted attraction, misunderstood monsters, secret room, Young Detective Team, Hidden Artifact, Transformation, and Magical Tech, as well as some themes. And let's see, some settings. So we've got the quaint town of Shadowville, the Enchanted Carnival, Magical Forest, Agency Headquarters, which is actually in an old mansion. And we have the Shadow Man's Lair. And then our tone is going to be mysterious, eerie, adventurous, humorous, and warm-hearted, or heartwarming, excuse me. It gave us information on the subtext, and it gave us a conclusion. So that's not really a conclusion, but that's what they're going to call it. Let's go through, and it gave me 
everything I asked for it. However, the, the synopsis really isn't the kind of synopsis I was looking for. So let's try the second prompt and see if it makes it any better. Again, we're just, we're going through here and we're trying to strengthen it as well as we're adding what the characters look like, strengths and weaknesses of the characters. I don't actually think we need the Myers-Briggs on this one. We'll go ahead and leave it there in case you guys want to assign Myers-Briggs to your characters. And also ask for five minor characters that we can use to build out the world. We are doing world building next week, but I want to go ahead and have this information. Okay. And it just, it doesn't look like it's doing what I asked or what I was hoping it would do. You have to be very specific sometimes. And I think I had, I didn't tell it what it wanted. So we're actually going to use version two to try to see if we can get a paragraph based premise. Cause that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for. So we've got Harvey Grimm is our mentor. We've got Bella Nightshade as our rival. Oliver Twistwood is the comic relief. And Evelyn Hallow is our innocent. So she is younger sister of a team member. I'm not sure which team member that is because I don't think any of them have the name Hallow. No? So I'm not quite sure who Evelyn Hallow is, but we'll figure out who she is. And then we've got Arthur Legend, who is the caretaker of the carnival. And then it talks about the timeline. We put I put the timeline in there so it doesn't try to rush the story. Okay. Let's add this and see if it will work and give us, there we go. That's exactly what I was looking for. So I was looking for a paragraph formatted premise. Now it's broken it up into four acts. Typically you hear about the, the three act structure. If you do a four act structure, you basically take act two, which is usually much longer than the first and the last. You just break it in half. Here we go. In the haunted carnival mystery, they are going to grapple with their unique abilities and personal challenges. I'm going to be asking when we are building these characters, what are their personal challenges? I don't know what they are. And I highly doubt that the LLM knows what they are. So we need to figure out what their challenges are. The antagonist Mortimer Shadowman. A cunning former carnival illusionist emerges as a formidable force, manipulating the supernatural elements of the long abandoned enchanted carnival for his sinister quest to find the legendary elixir of life. Okay, it's not quite what I wanted to happen. So in the setup, I don't really want them to have the team's formation. I really would like them to be already formed. And then they basically just leave their clubhouse and go save the day. Let's see. I'm going to have to do some work on this, but we are further than we were before. Every day is a, another step in the right direction. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I've definitely talked a lot longer than I had expected. Remember that the prompts will be on the sheet on the Notion document, and that link is in the description below. If you guys have any questions, please throw them into the comment section. Enjoy the rest of your day and we will see you back here next time on the Bite Size Booksmith.